It's Donna here. Let me just kind of tip this back here. There we go. That's better. Gads. I'm going to adjust my camera angle here real quick. That's better. Okay. Eh. Oh my goodness. All right. Sometimes things just aren't as they appear. There we go. I think that's probably better. Let's take a look. Oh, there we go. Now my head isn't cut off. <laughs> okay, now that we got that settled. Um, leadership. Leadership. Um, what do you all think of when you hear the word leader? What comes to your mind? Um, place that in the comments, you know, when, uh, and again, even if you're watching this on the recast, um, that's fine. Um, what comes to your mind when you think of a leader? Um, the Bible has a lot to say about leadership. It, it's a subject that I'm actually kind of fascinated by. Um, I'm fascinated about stories of great leaders. I'm inspired by stories of great leaders. Um, I remember a couple of movies from the 80s that were all about leaders. My first introduction to the actor Denzel Washington was in the movie Glory. Have any of you ever watched the movie Glory? Um, Matthew Broderick plays this young um, leader in the Union Army and he is placed in charge of the very first all uh, a black brigade of Union soldiers and he is charged with training them and equipping them to fight and the leadership skill and this this young leader was only like in his 20s his very early 20s he was just a young man but he proved to be a phenomenal leader and um it's just it's a great movie uh, if you haven't seen it um uh, i would encourage you to watch it another movie that really inspired me was the movie um hunt for the red october and uh, that was a movie with Sean Connery in it. And it was uh, about this Russian submarine commander that defects to the United States. And it's all about his leadership. Um, I think one more movie was a fictional account and that was the movie Gladiator. And um, that movie, again, talked about leadership. and. Of course, you know, we're inspired by the stories from the Bible about David's leadership and Daniel's leadership. Um, and then when we look at the lives of the apostles, their leadership. So what are some qualities that, that, that you think about when you think about leadership? I know for me, courage is one of them. Each one of these, both fictional and non-fictional um, leaders, all demonstrated extraordinary courage and wisdom. The other question that I have for you is, do you realize that if you are a follower in Jesus Christ, you are a leader? You are called to lead. It, it's not an if or a maybe. You are called to lead. In some way, shape, or form, you are called by God to lead. Lead in the example of Jesus Christ. So... What inspired this discussion today? Well, um, again, when I opened my, my uh, Bible this morning and my Bible app, the 
the scripture of the day led me to Romans 15. And um, in Romans 15, it was actually not the one, um, it was just talking about hope. Uh, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That was the scripture of the day, but I was thought, I want to read that whole passage. Well, Romans 15 opens with, we then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. So let's look at that in another version. Let's look at it in the Amplified. Now we who are strong in our convictions and faith ought to patiently put up with the weaknesses of those who are not strong and not just please ourselves. Let each one of us make it a practice to please his neighbor for good, to build him up spiritually. And it goes on to say, for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. Now may the God who gives endurance and who supplies encouragement grant that you be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus so that with one accord you may get may with one voice glorify and praise and honor the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ now you might ask yourself well what does that have to do with leadership well it has I mean when I read it it, it I saw that it has everything to do with leadership and with the fact that we are all called to lead. You may think, well, I'm not a leader. I never have been. Well, you are now. <laughs> if you're in Christ, you are now. Well, I don't want that responsibility. Sorry, too late. It's yours. <laughs> um, Christ calls us to be more than ourselves. More than the sum of our parts. More than our past. He requires us to be himself. He says, for it is not... Paul wrote, for it is not I who live, but Christ in me. See, one of the things that caught me right away was what it said about the Passion Translation. I really like how it put it. The Passion Translation, translation reads this way. Now, those who are mature in their faith can easily be recognized for they don't live to please themselves. A leader does not live to please themselves. For they don't live to please themselves, but have learned to patiently embrace others in their immaturity. That's a tough one, folks. It means that we have to deny ourselves and and again, you know, I'm speaking to me in this, we have to deny ourselves 
and patiently embrace those who are weaker than ourselves. You know, everybody, it, you know, if you're here, there's somebody who's here. If you're here, there's somebody who's here. And we're called to be looking out for the one who's coming up behind us. Because there's always somebody who's coming up behind us. And we have, and in Christ, love calls us to look out for those. Protect those. Endure with those. It's tough. It's not easy. So let's read on here. Our goal must be to empower others to do what is right and good for them and to bring them into spiritual maturity. So how do we do that? What does it look like? I wrote down some key words, empower, patient endurance, and embrace. To bear the weaknesses of the powerless. We all have weaknesses. Every single one of us has weaknesses. And we're, we're called to bear with those without strength. And, but we don't just put up with it. What does a leader actually do? Leaders will encourage, inspire, and equip. Encourage, inspire, and equip. In order to encourage, inspire, and equip others, you yourself have to be encouraged, inspired, and equipped. <laughs> and there are certain elements that you are called to, to certain qualities that, that a leader must be building themselves up in. Remember what the Bible says, build yourself up in your most holy faith. Think about the qualities of the leaders that you respect and admire. A leader does not require validation. Are you constantly looking for others to validate your existence? You are validated. You are validated because Christ, Christ considered you so valuable, he died for you. Christ considered you so valuable, he chose you from the foundation of the world. Christ considered you so valuable he stepped out of heaven and became a man. You are validated. You have the seal of the Holy Spirit filling you. You don't need other people to constantly say, you're important. You're good enough. You're okay. You gotta let that go. You gotta let that go. And trust me, I know it's hard. 
I do know it's hard. Um, life beats you up and you begin to question your worth. The bottom line is, the truth is, you're worth it. I mean, how, what value can you place on the blood of Jesus Christ? That was laid out for you. That's value. What, what value can you place on the gift of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you? That's value. Leaders are concerned with the here and now. They leave regret in the past. They don't have time for self-pity. And again, that's a tough one. I know because self-pity tries to knock on my door on a regular basis. And I have to say no. Self-pity is not, I don't have time for self-pity. You don't have time for self-pity. I made so many mistakes. Join the club. A leader has made mistakes. Look at King David's life. How many mistakes did he make? <laughs> A lot. Look at, look at Joseph. He was a victim of the most highest form many times. He was beat up verbally and emotionally by his brothers constantly. He was thrown in a pit. He was sold as a slave. Let's talk about some betrayal. Then he gave his life and servants as a servant to, to Potiphar and his wife told horrific lies about him and got him thrown in jail again for over 10 years. Did he dwell in self-pity? No, he did not. Did he have, to have every reason to dwell in self-pity? Absolutely he did. But he didn't have time for it. He knew his worth. He knew his call. And he kept his eyes on his destination. A leader will keep their eyes on the destination. A leader is going somewhere. And a leader is focused on that destination. They know that if they take their eyes off the destination, they're going to get off course. And they're going to lose precious, valuable time. They know to leave regret in the past. They don't, regret is only going to do one thing, stop you in your tracks and get you to go in circles. We as leaders do not have time for regret. We're busy moving forward. And Muffin is moving on to my lap. <laughs> she needs to go. She's distracting. The, the other element of a leader is that they are not concerned about their own validation, their own um, discomforts. And the reason why is they have other people to concern themselves with. They know that if they are all caught up in worrying about their feelings, their, their, their regrets, their traumas and betrayals, that if they're too caught up in that, they cannot take care of those following them. They are concerned about their troops. Their whole concern is about encouraging, inspiring, equipping, nourishing and protecting their troops. 
Who are your troops? Is it your children? Is it your spouse? Is it the people that you take care of at work? Is it your Bible study group? Who are your troops? Trust me, you have them. You may not think you do, but you do. There is always somebody who has their eyes on you as an example. Who are your troops? How are you, how are you placing them in priority? Because a leader will place the troops here and themselves here. A leader works with facts and not speculation. What are the facts? Um, how often do we get going in circles by trying to speculate what somebody else is thinking, feeling? Concern yourself with the here and now with the facts, with the things that are tangible and real and right in front of you. Don't worry about the maybes and the might be's. A leader does not bow to fear. Now I know we live in a fearsome world, but a leader knows that fear will only drag them and everyone else with them down. A leader knows how to send fear packing with authority, with the truth. Remember what Paul says, God has not given us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. We take authority over fear and we command it to obey the word of God. A leader is equipped fully with the word of God. And they rely on it and it alone to be the litmus test of every decision they make. What they choose to believe, what they choose to allow out of their mouth. My friend Risa loves to quote uh, the passage that we take, we take authority over every thought and we hold it captive to obedience of the Word of God. We are responsible for what we allow in here and out of here. We are not governed by our emotions, but we take authority over our emotions and we command them to obey the Word of the Lord. I know, trust me, this girl right here is an expert on allowing emotions to overwhelm her, okay? I am an expert on how to let your emotions completely rule your life. And trust me, the results are not pretty. <laughs> They're not pretty. I'm 55 years old and it's taken me all of those 55 years to just get even a small understanding of what it means to govern my emotions and not allow my emotions to govern me. It, it, again, the words of Paul, power, love, and soundness of mind. These are given to you by the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside you, then you have everything you need to govern your emotions with power, with love, and with 
discipline, a sound mind. That comes from being transformed and renewed by the power of God's word and filling yourself with the strength that comes from God's word through the power of the Holy Spirit. A leader is solution oriented. Are you dwelling on the obstacle or are you dwelling on finding the solution to the obstacle? Now Einstein said that he spends a lot of time identifying the problem. So uh, allowing yourself time to fully comprehend the identification of a problem is okay. Without fully understanding your problem, you cannot come up with an effective solution. But the goal is a solution, right? The destination is actually having a solution. So everything that you do is oriented towards finding a solution. A leader does not crumble under criticism. <laughs> That's another tough one. Oh, we don't like criticism, do we? <laughs> oh, I hate critic. I've hated crit criticism. When I was <clears throat> in my 20s, while I knew criticism was my friend here, getting criticism would cause me to crumble. Um, it, oh, it was my worst nightmare to be criticized. I had such a hard time because it crushed my soul. But see, a leader is not afraid of criticism. A leader will receive criticism and know how to process it. Um, take in the meat and spit out the bones. A leader is not afraid of criticism. A leader embraces the opportunity to learn from criticism and grow from criticism. And if it's unwarranted, they know how to spit it out. Eh, whatever. <clears throat> A leader knows how to receive the truth and spit out the lie and not be impacted by it one way or the other. They know that they are who they are. If they're off course, they need to correct course because who wants to be off course? And all criticism is doing is helping you stay on course. And then if it's unwarranted, they spit it out and move on. That easy, that simple. It doesn't crush their soul. It doesn't, and why doesn't it crush their soul? because they are filled with power, love, and a sound mind. They have all that they need in here by God himself. They are strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. They are not swayed by offense. Did you know that an offended people are a manipulated people? Do you want to be the devil's puppet? Then open your heart up to offense. Open your heart up to offense and you are the devil's puppet that fast. If you want to close that door, to the enemy and quit being his puppet, close the door to offense. Love is not easily offended. Now trust me, again, I am the queen of offense, okay? I have been the queen of offense. Oh, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> that, can't, that, that can't be, there's no time for that. There's no time for that. There's, there's simply no time for that in a leader's heart. Gotta let that go. 
got to let it go. It only drags you down and everyone following you. And it makes you the devil's puppet. If you want to be the devil's puppet, if you're okay with that, well then be okay with offense and being easily offended over every little thing. But if you're ready to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, you will be so consumed with the fire of God's glory that you are pursuing that you have no time for regret. You have no time for hurt feelings. You have no time for offense. You have the glory of God you are pursuing and you are drawing others with you towards that goal. Right? Leaders unify. Leaders unify. Let's look at that one scripture there in Romans. Um, Let's see here. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. Personally, I am convinced about you, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, amply filled with all spiritual knowledge, and competent, competent to admonish and counsel and instruct each other. Still, on some points, I have written you very boldly and without reservation and remind you, again, because of the grace given to me from God, to be a minister of Christ Jesus. Um, let's see here. Let's see. It talks about here about being in unity. Um, and living and, and declaring with one voice the glories of God. Um, But notice how he, how Paul here inspires and equips. You are these things, right? You are competent. You are confident. That's who you are. You are no longer yourself, but Christ in you. Is Christ offended? Is Christ fearful? No. Why did he say more often than almost anything else? Fear not. He wasn't afraid of anything. He didn't like things, but he wasn't afraid. He didn't walk in fear. Leaders know how to adapt and overcome. That, that one right there for me is something I need constantly. I find myself in the position often of feeling overwhelmed by circumstances. And a leader knows how to adapt to their circumstances and overcome their circumstances. Adapt and overcome. They aren't a victim of their circumstances. They evaluate their circumstances they identify the problem within their circumstances, and then they develop a strategy to overcome their circumstances. 
Adapt means you evaluate and then identify and then overcome. Okay, this is my reality. Okay, I'm not going to pretend it isn't my reality. How do I adapt to that reality? By identifying the problems within it and then develop a strategy to overcome that circumstance. You're not going to adapt if you're wallowing in self-pity. You're not going to adapt if you're allowing your emotions to overwhelm you. You, you are going to become a victim to your circumstances by allowing yourself to wallow in self-pity and be overwhelmed by your emotions. Um, by becoming offended by your circumstances. Well, I didn't deserve this. Well, maybe you didn't. Joseph didn't deserve to go to jail for a crime he never committed. But he had to learn how to adapt in the new reality that he faced as a prisoner. Undeserved, unearned, he was truly innocent. It wasn't fair. But he wasn't going to make any progress towards the goal that God had given him and the calling God had given him by wallowing in self-pity and being overwhelmed by the brutality of his environment. This is a tough one for me, Hans. I, I'm right there with you. If I was Joseph in that situation, it would take me a good long time to figure out how to quit wallowing in my self-pity and figure out a strategy of adaptation and overcoming. It, life, life deals some really nasty blows to people. Nasty blows. Nasty betrayals. Brutal betrayals. But my friends, a leader figures out a way to adapt and overcome. And guess what the good news is? You're not doing it on your own strength. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. A leader's eyes is always on the end game. Joseph's eyes were on the end game. He had been given a vision early in his life of what God had for him. His eyes were on the end game. He knew he was a leader. He knew he was a prince. And his eyes were on that end game. He knew he had people to take care of, people to inspire, people to equip, people to encourage. Leaders are aware of their own limits and weaknesses. We don't live in denial of our limitations. We don't live in denial of our own personal weaknesses. We are aware of them. And we listen carefully for when we're hitting a limit. 
We listen carefully to ourselves for those weaknesses that will trip us up and cause not only ourselves to fall, but those around us. We are, as leaders, self-correcting because we're aware of our limits, because we're aware of our own weaknesses. When we start to see signs that we're tripping up, that we're not doing well, that we're not in a good frame of mind, we listen to self-correct and we listen to others around us and allow their voices to bring us into self-correction. We receive constructive criticism. We realize we're not an island and we need other people to mirror to us. Hey Donna, you're a little off track here. Hey Donna, maybe that attitude ain't the best. <laughs> we have trustworthy counselors around us to mirror back to us when we're starting to trip up. And we receive their help with humility and gratitude. You see, that was one of the things in the movie Glory that I really liked. Uh, Matthew Broderick's um, character was being a little hard, being a little hard on his on his troops, and he had people around him that helped him see that some humility was needed and some softness to go with the hardness. And Matthew, the, the, the character's motives and intentions were good for his troops. He wanted them equipped and ready for battle. And he knew if he went too easy on them, um, they weren't going to be tough enough. But his his second in command reminded him that they need encouragement and inspiration too and and he need, he needed to come to a level of relate of relatability so we need that as leaders. We need those other voices, those trustworthy voices that are not afraid to tell us the truth when we're starting to mess up. We're starting to get off course. We can't do it all alone. God didn't make us that way. So a leader will always receive counsel and pursue counsel. King Solomon said in the multitude of counselors, there is great wisdom. So I hope this inspires you. Again, I'm speaking to myself here. These are all things that I'm processing myself. Um, that I'm learning, that I'm adapting to. <laughs> so again, if, if you're watching on the recast, I would encourage you to leave your comments, leave your insights. What are things that inspire you? Who are leaders that have inspired you? Um, and why? What is it about them that inspired you? Um, I hope this uh, blessed you and benefited you. Um, if you're watching on the recast, please, um, again, leave, leave your comments, leave your questions. And uh, God bless you, love you much, and have a great day.